Garrick three, four years ago was a hidden gem as we would have yeah. uh, defined it. And now it's a strong reality. And uh, Garrick is well established within uh, watch collectors around the world. I think you are seeing sales happening from the five continents, no, these, these, these yeah, days. So it's been crazy the last, the last three years. Uh, but we've been chipping away for a long time. As you know, we, you know, we've, we've always tried to innovate and do something a little bit different. And we've tried to do as much as we can in house. Um, so we started doing engine turn dials a couple of years back when we got our first Rose engine. And then we've managed to accumulate two more since then. Um, so we're doing more and more and more in house. But it's, I think that's what everybody likes, frankly. Um, it's not been easy because we've struggled for years and years and years. We've never had the recognition that I really think we deserve, to be honest. Um, but mainly because the, the British press don't tend to write about British watch brands. Um, you know, it's a fact, sadly. Um, but, you know, we've been chipping away and now the collectors take us very seriously. And we were quite fortunate. We have a, um, a two year waiting list at the moment on some models. Um, I mean, a lot of brands do. You know, a lot of brands have enjoyed success over the past couple of years, especially during the COVID lockdown. But, um, you know, I, I it's. The thing is, we've been there up and down, up and down, and Johnny's seen it over the years, and so have you, Pietro. Um, it's good to be in this position. It's a, it's a real good thing for us, and it puts us on a high, frankly. But the st all the stress is still there. Um, that never changes. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, going a little bit backwards, uh, Dave, for those that haven't seen you uh, before, of course, and are not familiar to your face and what you've been doing uh, in the background, how did you start? What, when, when did you have the clever, brilliant idea of saying, I'm going to reestablish watchmaking, I'm going to, you know, have my part in reestablishing watchmaking in the UK with those principles that you just... Uh, you just well, uh, I, was, uh, I was working as a consultant for years, um, and I used to sell high-end watches to VIP clients, sourcing rare vintage Rolexes and things like that. That's how I started in the industry. Then I started getting in with a few independent brands. So, and, and, I, and I started doing a bit of consulting. And, I, and I, I literally, I was at selling QP some years ago and I was approached by my partner, Simon, um, who asked me, he, he was running another watch brand at the time and he asked me, he wanted me on board to do something a little bit different. And obviously knowing the pitfalls, which were many, um, it was a lot harder in the olden days than it ever was now, start a watch brand. I just said no undenard for six months and then in the end i just thought you know what i'll give it a go i think if we do something a little bit different we can make this work so um that was the plan we pumped our own money into it um you know bought the machinery and the lathes and whatnot and we started uh, we launched with the shaftesbury back in the day then the hoxton uh, then the norfolk which kind of put us on the map because it was quite a unique watch at the time with the in-house enamel dial and the large nameplate uh, with a bit of a maritime theme uh, and then uh, we've been chipping away ever since. But it's, um, I, I said no for such a long time because I knew at the time it was a difficult thing starting a watch brand. But, you know, it, and, it, and it has been difficult over the years, extremely difficult. But the other thing that's worth bearing in mind, we've never had any investors of any kind. It was all our own money, um, which makes it all the more difficult, to be honest, because you get into a, a mindset where as you're frightened to spend it, and anyone that's been in business will tell you, you have to speculate to accumulate. That's what you have to do. And we were always paranoid about spending because it, it was our own money. And we always wanted, you know, it was, a, it was a bad way of doing it. We could have grown in, in twice the speed, frankly, if we'd have been a bit more savvy. Um, mm -hmm. But I think by taking our time, we've done the right thing and uh, we're in a good place now. So. Mm -hmm.